Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you all uh, for joining us uh, for our seventh uh, regional uh, webinar outlining the supports uh, offered uh, by Ontario's uh, government uh, in light of uh, COVID-19. I want to thank you all for joining us uh, here this morning. My name is Derek Rowland. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff uh, and uh, Director of uh, Communications to the Honourable Lisa McLeod, uh, Ontario's Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries. Uh, before we begin uh, today's uh, presentation, I'm going to turn it over to Minister McLeod uh, for uh, some formal remarks. Minister, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Derek, and thank you all for uh, joining us today. Um, as you know, the pandemic has uh, impacted our sectors. We were hit first hardest, and we will take the longest to recover. I'm joined here today by my very good friend, my seatmate, and my colleague, the Honourable John Yakovsky, who is the Minister Responsible for Natural Resources um, and Forestry, and uh, he'll be saying a few words as well. Just wanted to outline um, what we're doing here today. Um, we recognize our sectors uh, need a significant amount of assistance. Uh, they, many of you have been uh, shuttered for 10 months. Uh, we are the largest volunteer sector in the country. We are the ultimate small business uh, industry. And of course, we represent some of the biggest brands in the world. So what I wanted to do is bring everyone together in this RTO um, to see how you can uh, best access the supports we have within the ministry, but in addition, the supports uh, through our sister ministries uh, that, uh, that do impact or will alleviate some of your challenges. Uh, so uh, we'll start off with um, a few of... Um, two of, of my teammates at the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries, uh, Neil and Debbie, who will walk you through uh, what the restrictions are with the stay at home order, how they impact our sectors um, and what that all means. They'll then move into um, two uh, funding areas. Uh, one is the Ontario Trillium Foundation. The other is the Ontario Arts Council to discuss how they will be changing. So as many of you know, the Ontario Trillium Foundation has a base budget of $103 million. Um, we have uh, we've worked together um, with the finance and treasury uh, to in increase that budget over the next two years by $100 million uh, to support our sports, recreation, culture, not-for-profit, uh, and tourism businesses. And uh, in addition, we are increasing the Ontario Arts Council budget by $25 million this year, uh, 24 million of which will go to um, core cultural institutions across Ontario, um, and $1 million will be going directly to um, our artists. Um, from there, we will move over to finance and finance will walk us through um, the up to 20,000 small business grant that is that uh, all of our sectors are effectively eligible for if they are uh, under 100 um, and wants to show you how, how to uh, access that, as well as the 1000 uh, PPE grant that is available for small businesses. And finally, the energy bill and uh, and um, property tax rebate. Uh, from there, we'll move into a, a de demonstration from the Ministry of Government and Community Services. Uh, they will walk you through uh, how to access these, these uh, funding applications on the portal. Um, and so it'll be a step-by-step -step guide. And, and then at the end, we'll just wrap it up. So uh, before we turn it over to my officials at the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries, I'd like to turn it over now to my friend and my colleague, the Honourable John Yakubuski. John? Thank you very much, uh, Lisa, and thanks to you and your uh, your officials for organizing not only this, but uh, having these all across the province. Look, at none of us want to be here. Let's let's be clear. This is not what we uh, had hoped for, and not what we bargained for. Uh, you know, a, a little over a year ago, uh, but but it is it is what it is. And and uh, I echo, and I won't take too much time, but I echo what uh, Minister McLeod has said about. Uh, uh, the the effect on this industry and when you look at heritage tourism culture and sport it's such an eclectic mix of 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 members and, and and businesses yet beyond that I don't think there's any business in in our area of the world uh, eastern Ontario that isn't affected by what happens in the tourism sector I mean we're all so dependent on on that sector it's not where we want to be but as it is there are some things that uh, our government is doing uh, in order to assist and that will be articulated uh, clearly in the in the webinar today and, and I just want to encourage everyone to try to um, take advantage of what is available to your business we realize you're all suffering that's that goes without saying but there are some helps here we're low we know we're we're certainly uh, optimistic about you know the future and surely if we we had more vaccines that'd be great but 
but they, you know they are on the way and we're looking forward to the future but in the meantime uh i want to you know thank all of you for your uh fortitude and your persistence and i do want to thank minister mcleod she's right we're good friends we sit beside each other and we talk about these things all the time uh, but i do want to thank her for her leadership uh in this through this crisis but th thank you very much and I, I look forward to uh to the webinar so all the best Thank you very much, uh, ministers. Appreciate uh, your kind words. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Debbie Jewell, who is a director uh, within our tourism division within the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries uh, to walk through uh, uh, some of the current uh, restrictions uh, that are currently in place as a result of the province-wide lockdown. These are important to understand uh, as they do have an applicability uh, for some of the small business uh, grants uh, that will be going through, uh, uh, through the, with Ministry of Finance uh, later in today's uh, presentation. With that, uh, Debbie, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks very much, Derek, uh, and thank you, ministers, uh, and good morning to everyone out there. Um, I'm going to quickly take you through a summary of information regarding measures that came into effect in Ontario between January 12th and 14th, including businesses permitted to open, as well as specific uh, sector restrictions. Uh, I'll go through the tourism and culture items and my colleague Neil Coburn will uh, follow with the sport and recreation sectors. And then I'll provide you with an overview of the uh, new grant programs, which, which the minister just mentioned. So we can go to the next slide and we can actually skip this one and go to the next one. Great, thank you. So, to start with, uh, we'll look at meeting and event spaces. So these spaces are only permitted to open currently for the operation of child care centers and authorized recreation and skill building programs, court services, government services, mental health and addiction support services, social services and collective bargaining, as long as no more than 10 people are permitted to occupy the rented space. In terms of short term rentals, including cottages and cabins, these are only to be provided to individuals who are in need of housing. So any previously made reservations for short term rental accommodations are only for individuals who are in need of housing. Ice fishing huts may only be rented for day use and for use by members of the same household. Uh, and these conditions do not apply if it is for the purpose of exercising an Aboriginal or treaty right. In terms of restaurants, bars, and other food or drink establishments, these are only open currently for takeout, drive through and delivery. And this includes the sale of alcohol. So next slide. In terms of services like hotels, motels, lodges, cabins, cottages, resorts, and student residents, these can open. However, any indoor pools, indoor fitness centers, or other indoor recreational facilities that are part of the operation of these businesses are closed. Seasonal campgrounds must be made available only for trailers and recreational vehicles used by individuals in need of housing or are permitted to be there by seasonal contract. And only campsites with electricity, water service, and facilities for sewage disposal may be provided for use. All recreational and other shared facilities, in excluding washrooms and showers, must be closed. Other areas of the seasonal campground must be closed to the general public and must only be open for the purpose of preparing the seasonal campground for reopening. In terms of media industries, including sound recording, production, publishing, and distribution businesses, they are allowed to operate. Uh, commercial film and television production, including all supporting activities such as hair, makeup, and wardrobe, are able to operate. However, no studio audiences are permitted to be on the film or television set. No more than 10 performers may be permitted to be on the film or television set at any one time. The set must be configured and operated in such a way as to enable persons on the set to maintain a physical distance of at least two meters from other persons, except where necessary for filming. Persons who provide hair or makeup services must wear appropriate personal protective equipment. And singers and players of brass or wind instruments must be separated from any other performers by a plexiglass or some other impermanent. Also permitted to open film and television post-production, visual effects and animation studios, book and periodical production, publishing and distribution businesses, commercial and industrial photography. However, retail studios are not permitted to open 
and digital, uh, or sorry, interactive digital and media businesses, including computer system software or application developers and publishers and video game uh, developers and publishers are able to open. So next slide. In terms of concert venues, theaters and cinemas, including drive-in and drive-through events, these are all closed for all purposes, including rehearsing or performing a recorded or broadcasted concert, artistic event, theater performance, or other performance. Libraries may open for contactless curbside pickup and return or for delivery. For permitted services such as childcare, mental health, and addiction support services to a limit of 10 persons, or the provision of social services. They must ensure that circulating materials return to the library are disinfected or quarantined for an appropriate period of time before they are recirculated. And if someone is entering for the per, uh, for permitting services, uh, contact inform information recording is required. Museums and cultural amenities all remain closed. Horse racing is for training only, no races, no members of the public. And nightclubs are permitted to open only if they operate as a food or drink establishment subject to conditions that are applied to restaurants and bars. Next slide. Uh, zoos and aquariums remain closed to the public. They are only permitted to operate for the care of animals. Amusement and water parks remain closed and tour and guide services are closed. So I'll turn it over to Neil now uh, for the sport and recreation facilities. Thank you, Debbie. Businesses that are permitted to be open under the province-wide shutdown and specific restrictions for the sport and recreation sector include the closure of all indoor and outdoor sport and recreation facilities with a few exceptions. The first exception is facilities that are operated for the sole purpose of identified high-performance athletes who are training for the next Olympic and Paralympic games. Seven professional leagues that are identified under the regulations as having the ability to return to play in the facilities that they operate under a plan approved by Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health. At this time, only the National Hockey League has been granted such approval. Facilities that are open for specific purposes, such as childcare services, mental health and addiction services, and uh, social services with a capacity limit of 10 people. And in this uh, category, all um, openings are subject to certain conditions, such as um, ensuring proper social distancing is adhered to the wearing of face masks, registries for uh, supporting uh, contact tracing. Outdoor recreational amenities, no person is permitted to use an indoor or an outdoor recreational amenity that is required to be closed. However, there are some uh, outdoor recreational amenities that are permitted to be open subject to conditions. These include uh, parks and recreation areas, baseball diamonds, batting cages, soccer, football and sport fields, tennis courts, basketball courts, BMX parks, skate parks, frisbee golf locations, cycling tracks, bike trails, horse riding facilities, shooting ranges, ice rinks, tobogganing hills, snowmobile, cross country, dog sledding, ice skating and snowshoe trails, playgrounds, and portions of parks and recreation areas containing outdoor fitness equipment. Ski hills are closed. The ministry does have a round table set up with the industry to work with them on developing a plan that would allow them to return to operations when it's safe to do so. On the next slide, there are some public health and workplace safety measures that need to be followed when an outdoor recreational amenity is open. The first one is that any person who enters or uses the recreational amenity must maintain a physical distancing of at least two meters from other persons using that amenity. Obviously that excludes members of the same household. Team sports or other sports or games where people may come within two meters of each other are not to be practiced or played within the amenity. So in the case of an outdoor ice rink, you can go pleasure skating, but shinny hockey is not allowed. Any locker rooms, change rooms, showers, and clubhouses are to remain closed, except if they provide access to equipment storage, a washroom, or a portion of the amenity that's to be used to provide first aid. I'll turn it back over to Debbie to talk about some specific ministry supports. Okay, thanks, Neil. So as the minister mentioned, the 2020 provincial budget announced two programs to support tourism, culture, and sport organizations. The first is the Community Building Fund. 
So the province is investing 100 million over two years to develop a community building fund that supports community tourism, cultural and sport organizations, which are experiencing significant financial pressures due to the pandemic. These organizations support community engagement, tourism and recreation through a variety of attractions, experiences, events and activities. So funding support would be available to not-for-profit organizations and municipalities, and the program will be delivered by the Ontario Trillium Foundation with two streams. The first stream supports uh, local community tourism, heritage, and culture not-for-profits, such as community museums, local theaters, fairs, and culture institutions, to help sustain their operations in the short term and create new attractions, experiences, and events. The second stream is funding for municipalities and not-for-profit sport and recreation organizations to make investments in infrastructure rehabilitation and renovation in order to meet public health protocols and local community needs. The Ontario Trillium Foundation has been selected as a program delivery agent as they are well positioned to deliver funding to municipalities, indigenous communities and the not-for-profit sector. They have strong relationships with sector stakeholders and experience delivering grants on behalf of the government in a timely manner. Uh, the Trillium Foundation has robust systems in place for processing and evaluating uh, funding applications and for tracking and reporting on results. So details of this fund are being finalized currently and more information will be forthcoming in the near future. On the next slide. The second program is the Emergency Support for Core Arts Organizations. And again, the provincial budget announced that the government is providing one-time emergency funding of 25 million for Ontario's arts institutions to help cover operating losses incurred as a result of COVID-19. This funding will help these organizations remain solvent and prepare for a time when they can fully reopen their facilities, resume full programming and welcome back their visitors and audiences. The Ontario Arts Council has been selected as the program delivery agent based on their expertise and history of funding Ontario's core arts organizations, including major organizations. The agency has a robust system in place for processing and evaluating funding applications and for tracking and reporting on results. So again, details of this funding are being finalized currently and more information will be available on this program in the coming days. I will now turn it back to Derek for the next agenda item. Thank you very much, uh, Debbie, Neil. appreciate you walking uh, everyone uh, through the current uh, restrictions as they're in place, as well as those two upcoming uh, programs, uh, which I know a lot of people uh, are looking forward to. to. Uh, before we get to the next presentation, I just wanna note uh, that today's uh, entire presentation is uh, being recorded uh, and all the links uh, that are included uh, in today's presentation will also be shared uh, with you following uh, um, everything. Uh, all the speakers presentations so to make sure uh, that you've uh, got everything at your fingertips to take advantage of it. Um, also, we'll let know that there is a QA function uh, below. You're welcome to put the questions uh, in there. However, we are taking some questions uh, offline if you want to email us directly at minister.mcleod on ontario.ca. Today's presentation is uh, brought to you from uh, our ministry, although some of the programs uh, that are being outlined are administered by the Ministry of Finance, as well as the Ministry of Economic uh, Development, Job Creation and Trade. So if we don't have an uh, uh, answer to your specific question or your unique circumstances, we'll be sure to put you in touch with those uh, who do to get you the answer that you're looking for. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim Sherman, who's an Assistant Deputy Minister in the Ministry of uh, Finance, to walk us uh, through uh, the Small Business Support Grants currently on offer. Tim, over to you. Thank you for that. So it's going to provide a kind of a high level overview of, of the grant and um, hopefully be a helpful scene setter before folks take you through the detail of the, of the portal. So turning to slide two, government announced uh, the move to a, to a broader province-wide shutdown on December the 21st and at the same time announced that it would be introducing a New Ontario Small Business Support Grant in recognition of the impact that the shutdown would have on Ontario small businesses. It's worth noting that this new grant is over and above uh, other existing programs that the province has put in place, such as the property tax and energy rebates, um, or the support that's available to businesses through many uh, federal programs. So the new grant will provide a minimum of 10,000 and up to 20,000 for eligible small businesses. 
that are expected to experience a minimum of a 20% decline in revenue. So every small business will be able to use the support to navigate the challenging times and whatever makes the most sense for them. Um, I think all of you on this call will have a much better sense of some of the, the ways in which businesses will be able to use the support. Um, and there are three basic eligibility requirements in the bottom of the slide, which are probably a helpful framework to use when thinking about um, eligibility for the program. So first, the business needs to be either closed or significantly restricted by the provincial shutdown. And we have a list of businesses that, or categories of businesses that meet that eligibility later on in the supply deck. And the portal, of course, and the application will make that, that clear. Second, this is targeted at small businesses. Um, and so the definition uh, that is being used for this program is common in, in other contexts. And it's having less than 100 employees. So basically between zero and 99 employees at the enterprise level. And finally, the business needs to be able to demonstrate that it will experience a minimum of 20% revenue decline as a result of the shutdown. The primary way that this will be measured is by comparing April 2020 with April 2019 monthly revenue. Uh, but there are alternate measurements in place for businesses who were maybe established outside this window. And we also have a slide to show you what some of those uh, comparator points will be. And of course, applications for the new program opened today. So the, the portal that we'll take you through is now available for applications. Next slide, please. So there's just a couple of examples. Uh, on the slide, which we thought might be helpful to take folks through so you can kind of understand how those parameters that I just walked through sort of tangibly uh, work their way through the program. So we have kind of two companies, company A, company B on the bottom of the slide there. And we just assume that both these companies meet the business eligibility uh, test in terms of being shut down or significantly restricted. And if you look at company A on the left, so you'll see that it says there it'll experience a monthly loss of $20,000, which is equivalent in their context to a 25% decline in revenue. So that means they meet the 20% revenue test and they will be eligible for a $20,000 um, uh, grant, which is also the maximum, but it fully offsets the, uh, the revenue decline that's been uh, presented by the, by the company. And then on the, on the right, uh, there's a monthly loss of 15,000, which is also 20%. So they meet the 20% threshold uh, for the decline, and that entire amount, 15,000, would be uh, would be funded. So turning the slide forward to talk a little bit about the revenue comparators. So as I mentioned before, businesses that perhaps were not in operation in April 2019 will still be able to calculate a revenue decline using various alternative revenue decline comparators. And the goal here is to uh, make sure that uh, all sm small businesses um, will be able to be eligible to apply uh, for the grant. Um, as you see, the chart on this slide shows the different comparators. So I think um, one thing you'll notice when you look at the comparators is what the program is trying to capture is two points in time. One where the business would have been kind of in normal operations versus when they would have been experiencing some kind of public health restriction. So for example, if you look at the second row in the chart, um, this is for a small business that went into operation after uh, April 2019, and so as a result, couldn't use that more general comparator. Sometime between May 2019 and January 2020, the revenue comparator that they would use is February 2020 and um, April 2020. And when you think back, February was sort of a pre-pandemic, pre-lockdown, provincial lockdown uh, month. Whereas April, uh, the province was in a lockdown scenario. And so as a result, it's meant to be a good representation of the impact that that business would have been experienced uh, in the current provincial shutdown. And then just a note at the bottom of the slide, uh, winter seasonal businesses will uh, also be permitted to apply. And there's an alternative revenue decline comparator of they can choose between December 2019 and December 2020 or January 2020. December 2020, and that's just a recognition that winter seasonal businesses may have a different um, rhythm and cadence to their business. And so we're providing some flexibility for those businesses. All right, and then slide five um, provides the list of eligible small business types. So these are ones that are subject to closures or significant restrictions under the current shutdown. 
Uh, as we mentioned, this is sort of the first test that businesses need to meet as part of the application process. Um, and if they meet this plus the revenue test, they will be able to receive a minimum of 10,000 and up to, up to 20,000. Um, for the period of the provincial shutdown, I just wanted to note that this is also the list of businesses that will be eligible for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the property tax and energy rebate. So I know we're, we're focusing on this program, but it's just another reminder that there are other support programs in place uh, for businesses. So if they don't meet some of the other tests, for example, around revenue for employees, there are these other uh, rebates that you can also apply for. And it's all in the same portal, which makes it much easier for businesses to be able to enter that information. And then the, the footnote on the bottom there, just to be clear that there are businesses that are not eligible. And those include those that were already required to close prior to the introduction of the modified stage two measures in October. So that's kind of the starting point for determining business eligibility. And then of course, any essential businesses that are permitted to operate either within capacity restrictions or otherwise being essential are not eligible. So this is the final slide and hopefully that gives you a good snapshot of program parameters and eligibility. And I will turn it over to, um, I guess, folks to take you through the, the portal itself. Great, thank you very much, uh, Tim, for walking us uh, through a uh, very detailed uh, uh, understanding of the small business uh, grant program. Uh, for those of you who may have joined us uh, before the holidays, uh, when we did uh, a similar presentation, some of those finer details uh, were being uh, ironed out. Uh, and so a lot more information was included in that presentation and the intake is currently open right now for all businesses uh, to apply. I um, want to remind you again, if you do have a question during the, today's uh, presentation, you're welcome to email us at minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. We'll try our best to get back to you. But next, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Manish Agarwal with the Ministry of uh, Government and Consumer Services to walk you through the TPON uh, application database uh, to uh, demonstrate exactly how you can apply to take advantage of these supports. And with that, I'll turn it over to Manish. Uh, how about this new program? And I come to Ontario.ca uh, with this the background. Here I click on English and I see the link where it says support we are providing for small business. So I want to know as a small business, uh, what kind of support I'm getting from the government of Ontario. I click on this link, which, which takes me to a page with all details about the different programs uh, that the government of Ontario is having for uh, in support of small businesses. Uh, I see here that there's a new program. I click on it, and it takes me to, to the page where uh, it provides me the list of the programs that are currently available onto a small business support grant, uh, onto your Main Street relief grant, VP support, property tax, energy cost rebates, and what you need to apply. Uh, so the program information. Uh, what the program is, uh, what I will get as, get as a small business, uh, what are the eligibility criteria, and uh, information about the other programs as well. So I decide to apply uh, for the Ontario Small Business Support Grant because I meet the eligibility criteria. I, I'll click on Apply for Funding. Now, when I click for Apply for Funding, I'm going to take you to show you the test page because I don't want to overwhelm uh, the live system. So it brings me uh, to a page like this. So uh, what you have here is uh, here is that uh, get help button, uh, which allows me to get help from the contact center or get access to the program information guide. Uh, if I want to apply in French, I can switch to French as well. If I've already applied uh, for the other programs, I don't need to start a new application. I can resume the application or if I've saved the application for draft because I didn't add all the information, I can continue uh, with the same application. Or I can apply for funding. I can start with a new uh, application. So uh, given that I'm a new applicant, I'm going to click on apply for funding. And it brings me to this page where uh, I need uh, I need to check the eligibility if I can apply for these programs or not. I, by default, the new program is selected. I can select multiple programs if I'm interested, or I can just apply for that program. I click on check eligibility, which will again take me to a series of questions uh, to check my eligibility for the program. 
uh, the first question for the small business support grant program is, was my business required to close temporarily or significantly uh, restrict services as a result of being subject to points wide shutdown? I would say yes. Does your business have less than 100 employees? That's the definition for a small business. Did you say yes? And is my business expecting at least a 20% revenue decline? Um, I have a handy reference to the business guide that I can access uh, if I want to know more information about what revenue decline means. I'll say yes, and then I click on next. Now, it says that I'm eligible for the following funding program uh, down to your small business grant. I'm going to start my application. Now, when I start my application, uh, it takes me to a, a series of steps. It's going to ask me to uh, provide my business information, my contact information, information related to the new Ontario Small Business Support Grant, then review all the information I provided in the three steps, provide my banking information, and submit. So I come here, I provide my legal name, so I'm running a small business, Olivia Tea Room. So I provide information. Uh, I run it as store of happiness. And I provide my CRA business number. Now at this stage, I can validate the business number if I'm not sure if, the, if my business number is correct or not. If, if it's correct, I don't need to validate it there. Um, if I don't know where to get the business number, I will provide a handy tip. Uh, it can be found on the GST, GST HST return or the employer payroll or T2 corporate tax filing. Now, if I'm a self proprietor who doesn't have a business number, we also provide a handy link on how to obtain the business number from the CRA website. The next step is to provide the address information. I can use address local file, postal code, or uh, if I know the address, I can directly key it in. Okay, so I have that. My mailing address is same as head office address. If it's different, uh, I can provide that as well. Click on next. Now uh, here I'm going to provide my contact information. Nash, last name is Akaral, phone number, and my email address. Okay, so I've provided the information, I've confirmed my email address is that. Uh, it's very important to provide the correct email address, uh, validate it again, because that's the address that is being used uh, in terms of sending emails, confirming the receipt of your application, uh, confirming the payment process, and if you have to come back and resume your application. I'm going to confirm that I'm the owner and I have the signing authority uh, for the individual trust for the business. At this point, I can save a draft, which allows me to come back. If I don't have all the information, I can come back and uh, resume the application. All this information will be saved. I don't have to provide that information again. Click on next. Now here I'm going to provide information very specific to the Ontario Small Business Support Grant. Uh, right up front, we provide the application guide, uh, which the users can uh, review, the applicants can review uh, in case they have more questions or they want to find more about the program. Uh, I need to provide my business type and it says restaurants and bars. Now it asks me if my question is part of an enterprise or an affiliated enterprise. Uh, we have a handy tip in terms of what it means, uh, enterprise, or they can refer to the application guide for more information. So my business is not part of an enterprise. So I'm not gonna check that. Now here, uh, if, I, if I was having a winter seasonal business, uh, uh, like a you know a, a ski uh, a resort or uh, uh, any any business that is uh, 
uh, associated with winter uh, seasonal? I can say yes. And it will ask me a series of questions. Uh, if my business was in operation in the current business, business structure in December 2019, if I say yes, uh, if you do ask me for my highest monthly revenue, either in December 2019 or January 2020, given that many winter seasonal businesses don't start operating until January. For the purpose of this demo, I'll say no, my, my business is not, not a winter seasonal business. Then the next question is, was my business in operation in the current business structure in April 2019? If I say yes, it will ask me to provide number of employees, my revenue in April 2019, my revenue in April 2020. If I say no, uh, it asks me, it, it prompts me to provide my business full, first full month of operation, uh, you know, uh, the month. And based on that, it's going to ask me for the same information in terms of number of employees, what was my revenue, and in, in February 2020, what was my revenue in April 2020. Uh, for the purpose of the demo, again, I'll say yes, it was in business structure and operation in April 2019. Uh, the number of employees were 10. Uh, the revenue was 10,000 in April 2019. In April 2020, the revenue is 2,000. And I attest that the information I am providing is all good. I go through the terms and conditions. I agree. I've provided now information with respect to this program. I'll say next. Now here I can review all the information I've provided, the business information, the contact information, <coughs> uh, the information related to Ontario Small Business Support Grant. So all the information has been provided. It all looks good. I can go to the next step which is to provide my banking information. There's a sample check, copy of sample check provided, just in case people want to see where their branch or what their branch number, institution number, and account number is located on the check. So I'll put that in here. And I'll select the institution number. Now there are many, many banks. We're just not limiting to the top five. Uh, yeah, they are, we cover uh, a broad spectrum of banks uh, within the province. And provide the account number. That's it. Then verify that all the information I provided is correct. And click on submit. So when I click on submit, again, some terms and conditions. I'll be attesting as many Shagarwal that all the information I'm providing is true, agree, and submit. So uh, once I do that, my application is submitted. And uh, uh, so it, it, it's just a test environment. So it's saying that there's a problem because I've already used the CRA business number. So we have a check as well to ensure that the CRA business number is not used again, uh, there, there's only one application that can be submitted to that application. But once I click on submit, uh, I'll, uh, my application will be submitted and I'll, I'll get a, a, a notification uh, saying uh, that your submission, uh, your, your application has been submitted. Let me quickly share the email with you uh, on how it looks. Uh, the business will receive, a, receive an email similar to this where it says that you've applied for this program, there's your authorization number, and uh, it's under review. And if it's approved, you will receive a subsequent confirmation email notifying that, that your payment has been processed. And that it takes around two weeks uh, to receive your payment once the application has been approved. Great, thank you very much, Manisha, for walking through a very detailed presentation there of how we can take advantage of all those supports, including the Small Business Grant Program, the Main Street program, Digital Program, as well as PPE and the energy rebates as well. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn over to Minister McLeod for some closing remarks. Minister, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Shagarwal. 
Yeah, thanks very much, Derek. And thanks to all of you for, uh, for attending today. I think we've had over 111 people uh, join us. Um, again, if uh, you need any additional information, always feel free to email me at minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Uh, we will be doing some additional telephone town halls and we will be also uh, providing uh, more information with respect to uh, the Community Building Fund through the Ontario Trillium Foundation, as well as the Ontario Arts Council information uh, imminently. So with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, uh, Minister John Yakubuski, for any closing comments that he may have. Well, thank you, uh, Lisa, and I can echo what uh, you said. And if uh, if I have to fill out applications, I'm going to get to Manesh, is it, to uh, fill them out? He's much quicker than I would be on, on anything. I, I sit at a computer and it's like, like I'm living uh, in slow motion. Anyway, um, but thanks, thanks, thanks to your folks for uh, helps to clarify a lot of this uh, stuff. And in some ways, uh, I think we'll make people a lot more comfortable because we want we want their application. We want them to apply for this help. We know they've been affected by this COVID. We all have. I mean, there's nobody out there has not been affected by this uh, this terrible uh, virus. And we know you're busy. We know you've got many, many things on your minds, but please take the time to, um, we've put these programs out there because we know they're needed. And I wanna thank uh, Minister McLeod for, for lead her leadership and that she recognizes these things that, uh, that can be helpful. So please do apply. It will be, uh, we know we can't, we can't snap our fingers and wave a magic wand and say goodbye to COVID. We'd all love to do that. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we're there to help, and and we we know that uh, that help is is needed out there. So please, please, please follow through and, and and apply for these. And if you have any challenges, if you're in my riding, feel free to contact our office. If it's in general, uh, as as Minister said, feel free to contact her office because we do know uh, how people are going, what people are going through, and we want to make sure that we're there to help you. So, thank you very much for taking the time and sharing it with us this morning. Yeah, thank you, John, and thank you all. And, and there will be an email that comes out after this, um, allowing you to uh, to access uh, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the Ontario Arts Council, as well as the portal directly. And we will be sending a copy of this, uh, this presentation to you as well. And you're free and welcome to share it. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you, everybody.